Welcome to this short video, which is a reflective activity analyzing the assessment tasks in a subject I've been involved in teaching as part of the subject tertiary teaching and learning. This presentation will have a short introduction, look at the assessment tasks of that subject, look at the key issues with the assessment tasks, reflect on those assessment tasks using Tan and Biggs's considerations in design and reflect on my own studies in a similar subject. This subject, Crime in Contemporary Context, is the first year subject designed to give students an introduction to the criminal justice system and how it is represented. The roles in the course were the course coordinator, who is responsible for the design of the course, the assessment tasks, and providing the materials for the lectures and tutorials. The campus lecturers at each of the campuses of Mount Helen, Berwick, and Gippsland, who provided a weekly lecture. And the tutor, who, all, who provided a class each week that analysed the subject in question. My role during the course was as a tutor, and as such, I had no role in the design of the assessment tasks or the subject matter of the course. There were three assessment tasks in this subject, which were all identified within the learning outcomes. The first assessment task was a crime statistics analysis, which looked at two, two of the ILOs relating to identifying crime types and looking at the way they were measured. The second subject was assignment was a media analysis assignment focusing on three of the ILOs critically examining, summarising and identifying links and tensions between debates, concepts and perceptions. The third task students had to choose one of three tasks, the first being a cabinet briefing paper, a case study report, or a UN speech. This assessed multiple ILOs and required students to conduct research. The key issues I found with these assessments were the students didn't interact with scholarly work or references. They wrote to the sub questions and turned it into a series of questions and answers rather than a coherent piece. They wrote to the hypothetical scenarios, particularly in assessment task three, rather than demonstrating the ILOs and they used conversational English. With Biggs and Tan's considerations of design, the first being that students should be given a clear understanding of what they were required to do. In this subject, there wasn't a rubric, rather there were marking guides as shown on the screen now. To give students an understanding of what they needed to do to achieve these outcomes, I took time in class to explain to them and what they needed to do, as well as tailing activities in tutorials to meet those criteria. The next two considerations of design are linked. The first of these being that one assignment can assess several ILOs. And the second being that one ILO can be assessed across more than one assessment task. It is certainly true in this subject that one assessment task had multiple ILOs. However, as can be seen, there was only a small number of ILOs that were assessed across multiple assessment tasks. This 
mainly being the identifying of links and tensions between issues of debate, concepts and perceptions that was assessed in both assessment task two and three. The assessment tasks also need to make sure that students have the time to do them and the staff have the time to assess them. In this subject, it was true that weight was given to the assessment tasks in accordance with the ILOs that they assessed, being that assessment one was weighted at 20% of the overall mark, assessing two ILOs. Assessment task two had three, which was 35%, whereas assessment task four was worth 45% of the overall mark with multiple ILOs. However, in, in reflecting on the subject, assessment task three was probably the most substantial assessment given that students had to conduct their own research rather than relying on the resources that were provided to them. Biggs and Tan outline that there is the practical component that assessment tasks have to be manageable for both staff and students in that students have to be able to have the time to do them whereas staff also have to have the time to be able to assess students performances. The assessments were basically due at the start of every month. One due at the end of March, one due at the start of May and the final one due in the start of June. On paper this looked really good however from a practical perspective it was very difficult in getting feedback back from assessment task two in time for it to be applied in assessment task three which was very important given that in a number of cases students failed to reference their work which was more applicable in that link between assessment task two and three and enabling them to improve their research skills and perhaps the three assessment tasks in this structure weren't as manageable as they seem and this was complicated by the fact that we also had staffing shortages where I had to mark more on another class due to illness. I'm going to conclude this video with a reflection on an assignment I had to do as part of my first year legal studies subject which covered the same material as crime in contemporary contexts. This, this assignment was an essay which was reflecting on the media coverage of crime. Very much so, very much the same learning outcomes as assessment task two in crime and contemporary contexts. In reflecting on this, this was the this was the instructions we were given. There was no links to ILOs that were going to be met. There was no rubric. There was no marking criteria, just the question. So in reflection, even though I've outlined issues that were that came with this subject the subject that i've that i taught this year it's definitely a great improvement on the subject that i took in first year however i also reflect at the feedback and the assignment that i wrote and i didn't fall into any of the traps that the students did in this subject so perhaps in trying to outline what they had to do in this subject fell into a trap of giving them too much detail where students then went and more or less converted it into a short series of questions and answers. That concludes this short video being a critical analysis of a subject I've taken and reflecting on it in relation to the considerations of the design of Biggs and Tan. Thank you.